Welcome to My Vintage Love. We've had a few requests to show how I do my hair. So today I'm going to show you my basic set and brush out, which is how I get this look, which you see in so many of my videos and pictures on Instagram. Today I'm also wearing a lovely quilted 40s dressing gown, which is what ladies would have worn when they were doing their hair, presumably in the winter, back in the day. It's very comfortable and very warm. So here we go. So here we are. This is me with freshly washed, natural hair. As you can see, I have a fair amount of wavy curliness. Um, I am not a big fan of my natural texture, which is why I've gotten so good at setting it because I really like the way it looks set a lot better. Um, so today, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use. I like to use the Amica Curling Wand. I use the extension piece that is, I think it's about a quarter inches. It's the smallest one in the set. There are five wands in the set and um, this is the smallest one. I used to use a larger size, and I do occasionally still use this size when I want a looser wave, but I find that this size works the best for me, and if I get a good set with this one, it will last up to five days. So if, even if you have naturally curly wavy hair, if you really want a good set, I would say go with a smaller barrel curling iron. That made a huge, huge difference in my setting life. Um, next is, what I use for setting spray is Bedhead by TG. I'm saying that right. This is a real game changer. You don't, this is what I use to set, period. It's the best one I've ever used. You see it all the time backstage. All the major hair people use it so you know it's onto something. What it does is it gives the hair grip. So even if you have really straight hair or hair that hasn't taken a curl before, if you use this to give it some grip and some body and a small barrel curling iron, I can almost guarantee you that you're gonna get a really nice curl that will last. And for hairspray, good old Elnet, can't go wrong. It's just, has never done me wrong. And most people like this scent, for some people not, but I really like it. Um, then of course we have duckbill clips and regular clips to hold the curls. And I use a few different kinds of brushes. Um, I found the wet brush for me really works really well for brushing out and uh, Harry Josh makes one as well. It's very similar to this. Uh, Mason Pearson, always a good good one. It's, um, it's an investment, it's not a cheap brush. This is actually the smaller version, but it is really, really good for brushing out. And it's brushes especially are one of those things that's very personal. Um, keep trying until you find one that works for you. It's a very personal thing. And then um, a basic old rat tail comb for sectioning and um, occasionally I will brush out using this. I took some great classes with Nisha's hairstyling. She does amazing work and also his vintage touch. So a lot of what I'm doing today is just the stuff that I've taken from what I, I got from their classes and what has worked for me over years and years of trial and error of doing this on myself, which is, <laughs> it's been a long process. Um, so I'm just gonna get going. So I'm gonna section my hair. I'm kind of doing a rough horseshoe pattern up top. This is kind of the most important section. So try and get your, um, your part right up here. And of course everyone, everyone's different, but this is kind of the basic um, pattern that I use for sectioning my hair pretty much all the time. This is very much just my go-to setting. And then I do the sides right there, the back of the ear. I do that on the other side as well. Sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I use the comb, depends on how, how accurate I'm feeling that day. <laughs> you know, some, some days the hair cooperates and some days it doesn't. Hopefully it cooperates today. And then the back is just all one section unto itself. Okay, so I always start with the top section. Brush through it. There's a long section when you, I, I find for myself when I set my hair that I just look kind of nuts. Um, so you just kind of have to just know that you're just gonna look nuts for a while. It's okay. Um, so what I like to do is I start in the front. I do use the comb to get a nice small section. You really don't want your sections to be too big. That's kind of a big, a very important part of this, like don't take huge chunks. 
especially if you're using a, especially if you're using a smaller bare curling iron. Keep the section small. So taking my queen for a day. Give it a nice spray all over, comb through. And then I take the curl and I curl it forward. I didn't curl it forward for a long time and I was having the hardest time getting my front section to do what I wanted it to. And I took Nisha's hairstyling class and it pretty much changed my setting life because it made me realize that I needed to use a smaller curling iron and I needed to set my curls forward to kind of give them that beautiful, um, beautiful Veronica Lake kind of wave that we all like so much. And that's just me. I know everyone, there's a lot of talk over setting patterns and everything, but it's just, everything I'm saying today is just the thing that has worked for me the best over the years. After lots of trial and error. Okay. So I think definitely the top section and the side sections are by far the most important parts. So I definitely spend the most time on these parts. And then I just do that again and again. Make a small section, comb through, hit with thickening spray, comb through again. You just do that over and over again. I don't need the, anything with a clamp. Um, I really like the wand, it served me well. Everyone's different. I've seen girls doing this with straighteners, which always blows my mind, but if I want to curl, I'm, I'm going to use a curling iron. I think it's, it's really cool when I see girls doing, using straighteners to, to curl it. And sometimes they're easier than others. Make sure you just kind of try and keep the curl in its form when you're curling it. You don't need to pull it out and put it back together. Like kind of try and keep it all tight as you can so it can really curl in place. On the top section, I tend to get three to four curls. Today it's looking like this is going to be three curls. Oops, sorry. It's a pretty tedious process. <laughs> it's, uh, you definitely want to get the top section the best, like I mentioned. Make sure you get that little, that little pigtail in at the end there. That's the most important part. Make sure the ends are, are nice and curled. Um, you want to hold the curling iron on the curl, oh, gosh, probably about 10 to 15 seconds. Every hair type is going to be different. Um, if you have really thick hair, it'll be a bit longer. If you have really fine, thin hair, it can be shorter, but I'd say probably 10 seconds is a good ballpark. Um, also, the heat setting is, is important as well. I use 390 on myself. It's at 390 degrees Fahrenheit for myself. This does go up to 430, I believe, and down to about 270. Um, kind of play around and see what temperature works best for you. Uh, 390 is my sweet spot, but I think you could probably go down to 370 or up to 430, really depending on your hair texture. So moving on to the sides. And you just, again, make sure the section isn't too big. kind of feel it heat up your hair, you know. Don't leave it on there too long that it's going to burn anything, um, but don't don't just hold it there for a second and expect that it'll curl. You really got to give it time. This is, I'm just getting the, it's getting the very end there. Sometimes they need a little, a little more training. I'm just using a single finger to wrap it around because gravity is not on our side, on the sides. So wrap it up. 
and curling it under. Depending on the, sat the setting pattern, you could go, you could turn it to the side as well, but I like to, I like to go down. I like to give myself about an hour to do this from start to finish, from you know the first from the first setting to the final brush out. Um, you know, especially if you have a lot of hair, it takes a while just to do the entire set. The set is the long part. Um, that definitely takes the most time. So generally, I set my hair, um, do my makeup, let the let the set cool, and then go back and brush it out. And another tip is if you have a if you're wearing a dress with a really tight um, neckline, it might be best to get that into that before you start doing your hair and your makeup, or after you do your set and before you do your makeup, so you don't risk getting getting any makeup on it, and also you don't risk getting your hair perfect and then having to put it over your head and then messing up your hair. And that can happen with some of the some vintage pieces. Moving on to the next side. Same old, same old. Section it off, spray it, curl it, clip it. And it really is, I mean, it's taken me a long, long time to get to the point where I can really do this with a fair degree of confidence and kind of know what I'm doing, so. You know, give yourself time to really learn what works best for your hair and what works best for you, and it's it's all a learning process. I tried wet sets um, quite a few times, but I just I never really loved loved them the way that I love doing it like this. Um, it just took my hair too long to dry, and it just for me it was just too labor intensive. I know it sounds kind of ironic, but I just wet sets were not where it was at for me. I'm super impressed by people that do wet sets. God bless you, more power to you. Um, I just, it's, it's not for me. So, and I can also get, like I mentioned, I can get this to stay five to seven days depending on how much I work out or do hot yoga. All right, so moving on to the back. I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing in the back. This is the point where your arms might get a little bit tired, um, but <laughs> power through. Um, so I'm just gonna do exactly what I was doing in the front. Small sections. Spraying with the setting spray and then curling and clipping. Once, once I started to set my hair, I understood that old line that girls would give as an excuse if they didn't want to go out and say, oh no, I have to shampoo my hair today. I get it now. <laughs> it's such a process to wash it and dry it and set it. I love the old ladies in the, sometimes you still see the old ladies in the salons getting their hair set. So cute. And we're back. I've let my set cool and I'm going to take it out bit by bit and brush it out so we can see what we got. So I usually like to start with the front because it's the most exciting part. So I'm going to use the wet brush. 
This is just the brush that works best for me. I just kind of let it kind of see where it wants to go. At least in the front, I kind of try and brush it out curl by curl and then join the curls together. You really gotta be ready to brush for a while. It's, um, it doesn't just happen. <laughs> Don't be afraid to really just give yourself time. Take out the sides. And this is definitely a point where it's gonna look funny for a little bit, and that's okay. Through, brush through. Here we, here we kind of start to see the shape happening. Ah. I know when I first started to try sets and do my hair, I would always be so worried about brushing the curl out, but you really have to be willing to get in there and, and brush it to make it look, to get a good look. I'm gonna turn around so you can kind of see what's happening in the back. Obviously I'm doing this by feel, so it's not gonna look as nice. Again, if you've trained your husband, child, or dog to help you out with this, this would be a great time to, to have them come in. Don't forget you can really work those curls around your fingers. Curl the ends under using your fingers is a great way to do it. I kind of try and do it row by row in the back. It can be a little tricky because again, you're doing it by feel, but do it row by row as best you can. I find that's better than taking the whole thing out and brushing it all at once, especially if you want more of a, a true laid down curl pattern. You definitely get better about kind of feeling what's going on back there. If you have a double mirror and there's a way to watch while you're doing this, of course that's ideal. Um, but like anything else, you get better at it the more you do it. Oh, okay. So we have all of the clips out of the back now. You're gonna kind of work with the f with all the pieces now, kind of join them together. Like I said, when my back was to you, you can really kind of form the, don't forget to form the curls with your hand. It took me a long time to learn that one. And what I like to do too, take the duckbill clips, and you can kind of put in the, keep those waves in the front that you really wanna lock in, put your clips right there, brush in the bottom. Don't give up too soon, like I mentioned right as I was taking the clips out, it's, um, it's going to probably take more brushing than you think it will at the beginning, so really just keep brushing. Um, it's, it's, as Nisha, as Nisha says, it's all about the brush out, and it really is. Um, it's not just about the set, it's about the brush out as well. So don't be afraid to really give yourself the time to get that brush out just right. And if the back isn't perfect, totally fine. I think I read somewhere once that people, 90% of, of what people notice about your hair is the front. So if the back is eluding you, no worries. Keep brushing at it and put the bulk of your attention on the front part. And if things really aren't going your way, you can always put a hat on or a turban. There's the second one I'm to live. Mm 
don't know if I need that second one. I feel like there's always one curl that doesn't quite know what it wants to do. <laughs> it's usually on this side. So you kind of just try and make it join up with the rest of them. This is definitely a, a sleeker, smoother curl. I'm kind of going back over to make sure the ends are under. I usually like to bring along a brush with me. That's why I have the small Mason Pearson because it, my hair especially will tend to get kind of fuzzy and frizzy as the day goes on. So every hour or two, I like to you know get myself to a restroom and do a quick brush through to kind of get it back to where I like it to be. Um, my hair does definitely get frizzy very easily. Um, so if you don't have that problem, maybe you won't have that issue when you're out and about, but if you can get a small brush to put in your purse, I find that's really, really helpful. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking right now. Um, so I'm just gonna spray it with a good old Elnet. Man down. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the clips. Okay, so that's the finished look. I got my nice wave on this side and wave on this side. I'm gonna turn around so you can see the back. So I think it looks pretty good from every angle, although I haven't really seen the back yet myself. But this is pretty much my finished look. I could put a hat on top of this. I could go a different direction with this. I could turn it more into like finger waves at this point. I could do an updo from here. There's really all kinds of directions I could go from this point or have gone immediately out of the set. But this is basically my everyday look um, when I just wanna set it, brush it, and go. So thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you learned something. Put any questions you have below and please subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at myvintagelovevlog. See you next time.